when they developed universal life, it was primarily for living benefits. So even though you put in $500, people that would come to me wanted to increase the liquidity on their money that was earmarked for retirement, for college funding for their kids and so forth. Uh, they wanted to increase the safety, not only of where their money is, the institution, but safety of principle. So that when the market went down, they didn't lose. And they wanted to have a nice rate of return that historically has beaten inflation. You can't be rowing upstream at the rate of one mile an hour in a bank and the current of inflation is coming down to three or four. You're going backwards. And so <clears throat> people would say, Doug, where can I put my money that's earmarked for retirement, my kid's college education, emergency funds, and I'm going, well, let me show you this Swiss Army knife, okay? Now, you put your money in here and you go, wait a minute, that's $500 a month. Well, how much are you putting in the company's 401k? What if I could show you this will knock the socks off of that? What about this money you have sitting in the bank earning a measly 1%? If you could increase the safety and the rate of return up to 5%, how much more is five than one? It's five times. And all of a sudden they go, yeah, it makes sense. And then I would create an illustration. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say, here we go. The first few years they may look at it and go, well, uh, there's some fees in there. Look at what it does at the back end. And so I'd show them the back end at age 60 or 65. And then we start taking out income. And I would compare to their 401k and it would crash and burn in 11 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, money and, and municipal bonds would crash and burn, mutual funds, even if we anticipated 12%, because they're taxable. All of these are running out of money, and I go, look at this one over on the far right. Uh, it, it, it will last if you live to be 120, and you still have your million bucks or whatever. And they'd go, whoa, and I'd say, which one would you like? Uh, the one on the right, duh. And then I would say, um, <clears throat> Well, do you know what that is? And they'd say, what is that? I said, it's a life insurance policy. <laughs> and sometimes they'd go, wait a minute. Oh, I don't need insurance. I go, really? Okay. Look at what it does. Which one knocks the others completely, blows it out of the water? Well, the one on the right, but we don't need insurance. Well, I don't want to pay for insurance. I'm going, who's paying? It's, it's not costing. It's making you money. Um, Okay, if you don't really want the insurance, make me the beneficiary then. <laughs> but, but choose the one that's going to accumulate your money the best, tax-free, and, and generate the most income. And when you die, it, it blossoms and transfers. And finally, they would get it and say, oh, you mean that's net? I'm going, yeah, that's the net. Everything that you're looking at there it's is cool. after the cost of the insurance, which is now this. Over the life of it, if you, be, if you earn nine, you'll net eight. If you earn seven, you'll net six. If you earn 11, you'll, you'll net 10. I've been doing that for 45 years. And people go, wow, how come I've never heard of this before? Well, uh, I've heard, heard of it for 45 years, but don't follow the herd, putting money in IRAs of 401ks. Best advice I've ever heard, don't follow the herd and don't listen to the mainstream media because they're part of the herd. You need to break away and... Um, take ownership of a brighter future by learning uh, the merits of a max funded indexed universal life. I did a YouTube recently uh, why uh, multimillionaires, wealthy people are buying more life insurance than ever. They have the money. Yeah. It's because they want their money in an instrument that will accumulate tax-free. They can access, access it tax-free. When they die, it blossoms and transfers tax-free. Nothing else does that. Yeah. Uh, and often we've referred to, you know, Walt Disney. He saved Disneyland uh, by using access cash-free uh, to the cash values out of his insurance policy. J.C. Penney did it. Ray Kroc and McDonald's did it. Uh, David uh, Walker is the comptroller of the, of the um, uh, General Accountability Office. When he left the Obama administration, he said, I'll tell you where to put your money in max-funded universal life. Wow because he saw how critical the country was. We came so close to a financial collapse yep. in 2008, and he said to America, this is where I put my money. Why is that? Is it because of the reserves, the, the promise to pay the reserves, behind the reserves? You know, the, the whole conversation too, because you know, in the collapse, not one A-rated insurance company failed. You find out these real estate companies failed, banks failed, mortgage companies failed. A lot of people don't understand that uh, the insurance industry, legal reserve insurance industry, is not only the backbone of America, but the backbone of the world. This is, <clears throat> again, 
If you were to look at uh, banks, in 2008, 400 banks went under, 900 more were on the brink on the watch list, mm -hmm. and not one legal reserve insurance company went under. If they had a little bit of a, a, a run on the bank thing like AIG did because of the mortgages and so forth, it was, uh, they were able to, uh, they couldn't call all their mortgages due instantly. But there's always in the um, legal reserve insurance industry, uh, you cross insure, which is way better than an FDIC. FDIC technically went broke when they bailed out the savings and loans. So <clears throat> one insurance company uh, not only manages billions, one I'm thinking about uh, manages about $3 trillion, that's as much money as the IRS collects in taxes in an entire year. One insurance company, and they manage that much money maybe with one skyscraper full of employees. You know how many federal employees uh, spend, you know, it takes sure. to manage you know, three or four trillion that the IRS brings in. So <clears throat> this is how I look at it, Matt. When people say, why do you put your serious cash there? It's because, in my opinion, the insurance industry would be the last domino to fall if things got really bad. Okay. You'd have so much forewarning because the banks would be uh, uh, collapsing. Uh, in the Great Depression, 80%, uh, real estate dropped 80%, a lot of real estate. Banks went under, 40% never uh, reopened again. Not one legal reserve insurance company went under the Great Depression. They came through with flying colors, crediting 25 3 3.5%. So we would have so much warning if, that, if the economy is ready to collapse that you could take out your money out of the insurance policy because it's so liquid. Uh, this is where banks put 30 to 40 percent of their tier one assets for liquidity and safety because they asked the five major banks in America in 2008, where do you have your money <laughs> for liquidity and safety in case of a run on your bank? Guess where they had it? 30 to 40 percent was in Boley, bank owned life insurance. See, it's the owner of the insurance policy that gets all the tax free accumulation of that. But let's say it got really bad and you got your money out of your insurance policy, if the American dollar became worthless, what good would it do to have your money? See, the last domino to fall would be the insurance industry. Uh, you can't buy, uh, live on gold and silver. You can't eat that. Mm -mm. So I choose to put my serious cash in the last domino that would fall. And if that failed, the American dollar would be worthless anyway. But you want it in a, in, a, in a position of safety and liquidity so that you can convert it to gas and groceries or food or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is there's things in life even more important than the money. But that's why so many institutions will choose to put your money in a bank into an insurance company because they're rock solid as far as their uh, liquid reserves. Does that make sense? For sure. Yeah.